Okay, for question 2a, describe the complicated cascade and how it's activated by a classical. Okay, let's first take a look at the classical pathway. So, uh, the classical pathway is basically um, activated by antibody and antigen antibody complex where there's a complement binding site on an antibody where C1 protein can bind to. C1 is made of uh, three subunits, mainly C1Q, C1R, and C1S, two subunits of C1R and C1S, and one subunit of C1Q. C1S is going to be what's responsible for the cleavage of the following steps. So C1 from C4B to A via the cleavage of C4A and C2B. C4B to A is a C3 convertase that converts C3B to C3B, C3 to C3B via the cleavage of C3A, which C3B combines with the C4B to A complex to form a C5 convertase C4B to A3B. C5 then forms C5B via the cleavage of C5A by C5 convertase and C5B um, incorporates with C6, C7 and C8 proteins into the cell membrane. Uh, this complex will then recruit uh, C9 proteins to form the membrane attack complex leading to lysis of a pathogen cell. As for the alternative pathway, the alternative pathway is spontaneous where C3 forms C3B and C3A and C3B from C3BB via the combination of factor B and C3BB from C3BBB via factor D, which is a C3 convertase and can catalyze this spontaneous reaction I spoke about earlier. C3BB from C3BBB3B via C3B, and this is a C5 convertase. The following steps are similar to the classical pathway. What are the downstream consequences of complement activation? Well, as we can see, we have C4A, C3A, and C5A, which are anaphylotoxins responsible for um, inflammation. We also have C3B scattered around all pathogens um, during the complement cascade, leading to opsonization. C3B is responsible for opsonization, and of course, you have the membrane attack complex. Why would an individual with CA deficiency be susceptible to Neisseria? Well, Comp the complement pathway is our immune system's main um, innate response to lice uh, pathogenic cells like bacteria and viruses via the membrane attack complex. With, um, with a loss of any one of these uh, C6, C7, C8 or C9 uh, proteins, you're not going to be able to form a membrane attack complex, hence not able to lyse the cell. This is why you will be very susceptible to the sim to similar infections of um, bacteria because you cannot lyse the bacteria via membrane attack complex. Okay, for for question C, what is CH50? Well, CH50 is the serum needed to lyse fifty percent of sheep red blood cells. To understand the meaning of that, we first need to understand how this test is performed. Say you have a container you will have a fixed amount of sheep red blood cells and sheep antibodies in the container. Sheep antibodies will then bind to the sheep red blood cells in the container and keep in mind that this is a fixed amount. You will then add the serum, uh, patient serum, which is a variable amount, um, into the same container. The patient serum has a variable amount of complement and as we know, complement will bind to an antibody because antibodies have complement binding sites. Once once the complement binds to the antibody, this will lead to the lysis of um, the sheep red blood cell. If you have 50% of uh, sheep red blood cell lysis, um, this is known as a C9 deficiency. But if you have no sheep red blood cell lysis, it can be any one of the four complement deficiency C5, B, C6, C7 or C8. As for the last question, tacrolimus. Okay, T keep in mind that tacrolimus is also known as FK506. So to un understand the mechanism of action of tacrolimus, we first need to understand the calcineurin pathway. So in a T cell, when a T cell receives a signal, T cells will then lead to an increase in intracellular calcium via calcium channels. The calcium channels will then um, give a positive response to calcineurin to dephosphorylate nuclear factor of activated T cells, which then leads to 
interleukin-2 formation. Interleukin-2 will then lead to proliferation of immune cells. So FK506 or tacrolimus will bind to FK binding protein in T cells leading to inhibition of calcineurin. Inhibition of calcineurin will lead to inhibition of dephosphorylation of nuclear factor of activated T cells. Hence, you won't have interleukin-2. And hence, this produces an immunosuppressive effect.